It's about that time of day again, folks. Welcome back to your nightly newsletter, boys and girls. Joseph James here. It's Tuesday evening, May 17th, 2016. Another jam-packed newsletter in store for you tonight. We got crude S&P, gold, and of course, we can't forget about the euro. The roller coaster continues this week in the futures markets. Crude oil is bullish going into major news. E-mini S&P is bearish, but expecting a pretty big correction after a double overshoot of that channel low today. Gold is bullish, trying to finish rotation back to the highs, while the euro looks a little bit like a train wreck, but it's trading inside a megaphone and headed lower for tomorrow's session. We got a great plan for you guys in Wednesday's trading session. We got some news to talk about. We got some strategies for tomorrow. Before we jump in and take a look at tomorrow's plan, I do want to remind you the only place to watch the full-length version of this newsletter video is here on our trading blog at sidewaysmarkets.com. If you're watching the video right now on our YouTube channel, that's wonderful. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube videos, right? We get a lot of great videos on our YouTube channel. But make sure you follow the link in the description of the YouTube video and come over here to sidewaysmarkets.com and watch the full-length version. While you're here, grab a free pass in the upper left-hand corner. Come join me as a guest in our trade room. Grab the free pass in the upper left-hand corner. Don't forget in the lower left-hand corner to register as a member of our mailing list. Then I'll send you an email every evening right around 7.15, 7.30 when the newsletter is ready to be watched. Right below the video tonight, you can download all the charts. You see me using tonight's video, grab all the charts, have those ready on your computer by following that link below the video. And over on the right-hand side, don't forget, you're going to learn more with me in one week on my trial than anywhere else on the interwebs. I can guarantee you that. Join the trial membership over on the right-hand side and learn what it means to be a student here at School of Trade. If you have any questions along the way, I'm always here standing by to help you guys out. Use that live support button on the right-hand side of the blog if you have any questions. Hope you're having a great week so far. Boy, oh boy, this has been quite the week here, hasn't it? Tons of volatility and lots of tradable opportunities for us here so far. Let's jump in, take a look at tomorrow's news schedule here. We're going to start out tonight, though, in Japan. Tonight we got big news out of Japan. The uh, GDP out of the... Right uh, out of Japan here tonight, 7.50 p.m. Eastern Time, just a little bit after I send out my nightly newsletter. If you're trading in Asia, don't forget about the GDP at 7.50 p.m. Eastern Time, just after the Asian session opens up. Tomorrow morning, Wednesday, May the 18th, we do have some pretty hefty news on the calendar tomorrow. We get the labor market report coming out of Great Britain, and of course we have the, basically it's an inflationary report coming out of the EU tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. That should get markets moving tomorrow morning early for you guys in the London time zone. If you're here with me tomorrow in the trade room, we open up our trade room tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Eastern time. And really the only news we have tomorrow on the U.S. schedule is going to be the 10.30 inventory report tomorrow for crude oil traders and tomorrow afternoon the 2 o'clock FOMC meeting minutes. Now, we always trade around the news but tomorrow I want to remind you guys if you're trading crude tomorrow morning it's a much shorter window of opportunity tomorrow after 10 15 on inventory day trading crude oil becomes gambling we're gonna be trading this market live in real time tomorrow morning with all of our students in the trade room we will be very careful though after 10 15 not to get wrapped up before that news and then I always give this particular news event I always give it at least 10 minutes after the news comes out before we start trading it once again. We also have expected rollover tomorrow. As we're as I'm recording this right now, I'm looking at a volume discrepancy here. It's pretty substantial right now between the CL616 and the 716. So we are expecting to be on the 616 tomorrow for crude oil. But you know what I always tell you guys, between the 16th and the 18th of every one month, Right. This is the one thing about crude oil. It does roll over every month. Crude's every month. Gold's every two months. S&P and the euro every three months. We cover all the markets and how they do, how they work with rollover in our beginners course. Don't forget our beginners course here at School of Trade will teach you all the fundamentals, all the important economic news, all the important calendar dates, and of course all the contract specifications that involve rollover. So be aware of that. Tomorrow we should be on 616, but it might be a little bit lower volume tomorrow with news and of course with pending rollover on the oil market. So be on your best behavior. We'll be here tomorrow morning live in real time at 8 o'clock Eastern time to help you guys through it. First of all, 
We're going to go crude, S&P, gold, and we'll wrap up with the euro. Crude oil is bullish this evening and trading at the highs of a channel, which tells the buyers to look for opportunities back at the lows or wait for an aggressive breakout pullback to expand the channel higher tomorrow. As you can see, there are two potential channels here. We're at the high of that smaller channel. Oftentimes, when you see that bigger channel looming, it may break out, pull back, and expand that channel up to that uh, kind of rising resistance trend line overhead from that first big swing in the overnight session. The buyers won't be interested, though, in buying into the measured move, which is right there at 48.69 and channel high resistance. So the only two options would be to get a breakout pullback above the measured move on the way up to the expanded channel high or look for buying opportunities back at channel lows and support levels tomorrow. We have contract rollover tomorrow, so volume is expected to be lighter than usual and with that major news tomorrow at 10 30 do not do not be surprised if we see this market pull back sharply so buyers can get a cheaper price heading into this news as you can see right now a couple key components here right now we've listed our key components in the upper left hand corner again don't forget we are watching rollover to the 716 contract but it does look like we're on the 16 616 contract going into tomorrow i can never really predict rollover we may wake up tomorrow morning and see the whole thing shift on us if we do we'll make an educated decision and trade the 716 contract unfortunately i i'm good but i'm not that good i can't predict everything here for tomorrow we will be looking at that tomorrow morning though at eight o'clock eastern time when we open up our trade room really there's there's kind of three different channels you want to be aware of. First of all, the most important one is what we know right now. And we know we have this bull channel and we have price rotating from the low to the high, back to the low, now up to the high. Now, with that said, buyers will be looking for buying opportunities back at the low using a failure into strength, into pullbacks, and then back up to that high. So keep in mind, if this channel high does hold, buyers will be looking for opportunities at the low of that channel. And then don't forget, we also see quite often what we call traps, right? Pullbacks to prior areas of support. And in all reality, in such a in such a uh, kind of a variable market for tomorrow with rollover and with news, I, I wouldn't be surprised at all if this market pulls back even further and traps all the way down before we see this market come out. So believe it or not, in the short term kind of day trading time frames, you know, I'll use a 1000 volume chart for my day trading time frame um, or an 800 tick chart or a you know, two or three minute chart for a day trading time frame. We may be in a bear market for the first few hours tomorrow morning if this thing pulls back, right? So don't be surprised if this thing pulls back. And if it does, just stay patient. We'll obviously have selling opportunities on the way down in the short term. Uh, but again, don't be surprised though if this thing's pulling back just for one big, you know, one big pullback ahead of that 10:30 a.m. news tomorrow. Now, with that said, there's also potential here for a larger channel. Take that channel low, pop it right up that, to that high up there. This is what we call a pending channel or a hidden channel. We need at least four points to create a channel. Right now, as you can see here, right now, we've only got one, two and then possibly three, okay? So we really don't, well, I should say one, two, three, and then possibly four, excuse me. I was never that good at math to begin with. So the reality is, is we definitely have a pending channel high up here, and that may be a good example of how this price expands out to it right before this day finishes tomorrow. What you want to do to get there, though, is with that measured move in, in your way, you really have one of two options. Either you got to get this price to go low so you can buy it on the dip or a strong breakout pullback and then on the way up to that high. That's the most important thing right now. Buyers either have to buy it low or they're going to have to get through that overhead resistance and then hold it on a pullback. Okay, so keep that in mind for tomorrow. The third very important channel is the little minor channel here, right? Major channels, minor channels, micro channels, markets are fractals. So we're going to have channels in the bigger picture, channels in the smaller picture. With that said, this bull channel tells us 
to expect a pullback and a retest of that high. This bull channel tells us to expect a pullback and a retest of that high. It's difficult to tell where that's going to be. Maybe it will be back to the support area here and a retest of that high. Maybe it's not until we get above that that measured move, right? Breakout, pullback, and back to that high. It's very difficult to tell when that's going to happen, but that short-term bull channel does tell us to look for a pullback and a revisit of that high going into tomorrow's session. So really, when you look at this in the big picture, we've got a couple big news report levels here, 48.76, 48.30. Those are going to be short-term support and resistance levels for tomorrow. We also have this kind of falling support area here. This is a definite triangle that we saw earlier. You can see that news breakout actually pulled back and used the high of that triangle. So we know we have that waiting for us as support. As this price goes lower, don't forget to look for failure into strength, strength into pullbacks, right, for that for that pullback going higher. As it goes lower, buyers will be looking to buy the low. As it goes lower, buyers looking to buy support, right, so on and so forth at these support levels that we have below. Really, the ideal would be getting this price to pull back. If it breaks higher, then you got to be a little bit careful here because that measured move becomes the definite line in the sand. It'll be used as support if we can hold above the measured move, but watch out though. If it slips back below it, it will act as resistance here and buyers will not want to buy into it. It's always a classic scenario around that measured move. If we can get a strong move above it and keep it as support, buyers will gladly buy it as support. But if it breaks out and pulls back, buyers are not going to want to play with fire here buying into that resistance. So what will typically happen is it'll trap low and then go higher, giving those buyers a chance to buy without buying into resistance. So that measured move is a big variable for us, a big line in the sand. If we do push higher, the best, obviously, right, the best opportunity here would be a pullback to areas of support so buyers can buy it cheap. Don't forget, low volume ex expected tomorrow, major news on the horizon tomorrow. We may wake up tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock Eastern time here and see this market trending lower, and we will be looking for short-term selling opportunities on a more intraday time frame, knowing, though, that after that 10.30 a.m. news comes out, this may be nothing more than a deep pullback before this thing shoots higher. Keep an eye out on prior areas of support because that's where buyers are going to be loading up ahead of that move potentially right back higher tomorrow. The big variable, like I said, we got rollover pending tomorrow, inventory news tomorrow morning at 1030. It should be a wild one. I'll see you guys tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. and we'll trade that market together. How about that S&P? S&P is bearish, but a double overshoot at the lows of the channel gives the buyers a window of opportunity to send price back to the channel highs and most likely the next major swing level overhead before the sellers take interest again. The measured move is the line in the sand right now for the buyers who will be looking for a move back above channel highs to that major swing at 2052 and a quarter, where we can then assume Sellers, swing sellers, of course, will start looking for new opportunities back down to retest the lows at 2037. The bear channel tells us that sellers will be waiting as this price rises higher and the buyers will be looking for a breakout pullback above that channel high to get the window they need to push higher. What is incredible here on the S&P is we talked about this last night on the newsletter. We had that strong move higher here, if you recall. And if you remember, right, we had that measured move support area and that was the battleground here today. The buyers could not hold above it and you can see what happened as soon as that as soon as that prior support area we talked about on last night's news that are gave way it just collapsed and of course the buyers simply walked away from it what a roller coaster ride this is why financial advisors tell their clients not to read their daily statements right <laughs> because what a swing and this is how the entire year of 2016 has been this is one of those prime examples of why I love trading futures and I love being a day trader because you're seeing these huge, just complete V top moves one day after the other where there's plenty of selling opportunities on the way back down, right? If you came in today in our chat room this morning, all you were doing was just selling this sucker lower the whole time.